elementary schools, and his goal is for me to be able to hit all six, which switched from meeting, meeting 135 kids to, you know, six, 700 kids just in one grade level. So we're looking at doing that, and I think down the road I may just be a roving teacher and hit all the schools for certain things. But there's some problems with that, um, principles and curriculum, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of hurdles we've got to get through. Not that it can't happen, but we've got to get some really innovative, innovative thought on how to do that. But yeah, we did have that discussion. Um, they, are, they were really nervous that, like, uh, I got picked up for the NASA Endeavor program too. And uh, I'm working really hard at, at the research and development for them. And he's a little nervous, am I going to get pulled away to that side of the thing? And then NSTA has kind of pulled me in a little bit. But uh, so far, it's been manageable. Good news for me, my boys are, I don't, it's just my wife and myself at home. You know, my boys are older. And uh, you know, that I don't have that. My family's real small at home. So when we're gone, we're gone. Donna likes to travel with me sometimes. That's pretty good for her. but. Uh, I'm a little concerned about the time away from class. I thought it may have an impact last year. It didn't. In fact, it, the, the numbers went the other way. Um, so we're really excited that just having an astronaut in the school district really works out quite well. So, and it, it's opened the door with NASA quite a bit for me, too. Um, great programs. We're going to do a lot of neat things this fall at all different levels, K-12. It's just not the one. So I, last night I was playing with the uh, there's an interactive game. You can go to the International Space Station. And you can do little missions and you can do things. And it's like, I can see elementary kids, I can see high school kids, I can see all that. So, And there's a new NASA class thing, K-L-A-S-S. -S. You can actually simulate a uh, launch from your computer lab through uh, NASA, which is kind of a neat program too. Uh, it's NASA class, K-L-A-S-S, -S, if you're interested. The software's free, it's an entire free program. You can download it in the classroom. Kids play different, different uh, roles. Some are mission commanders, some are other things, and you can actually go through a simulated launch of the shuttle, which it looks really exciting. I think we're going to do that one too if we get a chance. So, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. I was curious if you could explain a little more about the cancer research. Yeah, um, you know, it's one of those things. Sherwin was he is such a dynamic person, and he would just mention things off the cuff. And as we're walking through, you know, we're walking, he's showing us, you know, the, the big thing that they had there, of course, was the, the new toilet going to International Space Station. He was real proud of that. But then he started talking about all the things that come off it. And then sure enough, we walked into one room, and it was just, there's these two machines up on the shelf, and it says Mars Rover. And we asked him what it was about. He goes, oh, it's really kind of neat. And he said, this is the two machines we're working on right now to look for life on Mars. And it would be on the next thing. And as we're leaving the room, he goes, but you know what? He says, I really think what I'd really like to do with it before it goes is test cancer cells. And we said, well, OK, why? And he goes, I think with the quality of what I can see we can produce <laughs> visually and uh, research-wise is tremendous. And if we can get some cancer cell research out of this too, boy, what a boost that would be. So that was his goal, was to try to take that on-the-shelf technology that he was developing and try to get it out there in the real world, like NASA, and one of the best things NASA does is get their products out, you know, cell phones, everything we use, all the different technologies that come out of the space program. And if he can get that out there, that this machine can look at cancer research, that's really impressive. Now, I've not talked to him in six months, so I don't know where he's at with it. But uh, one of the things I promised him is we would talk about it as we got out there, that the technology is out there to take a deeper look into cancer. It's just a matter of trying to get people, you know. Is that due to the micro micrographic Right. Yeah, a little bit of both. Um, he's really excited about that. He's really excited about looking at um, what it's like in, a, in, in a, not a 1G environment, what it would be like on, on Mars being less, you know, less gravity there. Does it make a difference? How does it look? How do things look? And then just practically just, you know, do some research with it just in the lab. But unfortunately, there's, there's one. And that one machine is dedicated to what they're building right now, so. But uh, I'm sure that as that gets developed, he showed us one thing too that was really neat. Uh, they had these big bags of uh, seaweed. And he throws them out in the ocean where it's polluted maybe downstream from a, uh, uh, a place where they're dumping human waste into the water and things like that. Well, the algae eats that stuff. And what he found was the byproduct from it was oil. And he said it, the research would look very promising, but then they started realizing it was $200 a barrel 
to produce oil that way. And he said, but you know, a couple years ago when it was $40 a barrel, nobody was interested. It spikes at 120, 125. Now they're getting interested again in his little experiment of throwing these bags out there. So he says, everything's cyclical. We said, how long, how old is that? He goes, about five years, six year technology. But he said, you know, at $200 a barrel, nobody cared. Oil got to 125 bucks a barrel. That may be a good idea. Let's go back and take a look at it. So they were looking at trying to research and develop that too. But I mean, it was amazing, the stuff. It's like walking into a, uh, a, a totally different world when you walk into some of their labs. I mean, this stuff is just up on shelves. And they pull it down and he would demo it and tell us where it was going and things like that. So, But that's the neat stuff that the kids like because when I go back and we see pictures of it and we talk about it, they get excited about that and we talk about research and development and why it's important to do it. So, thanks. Yep, that's, I think we're well past, aren't we? Well, we're coming up on 3 o'clock. Okay. Is there anything else? If not, uh, I'll, I'm going to be around most. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, we're members of Society of Astronomy uh -huh. and uh, also the observatory. Mm -hmm. Have you ever talked to either one of those? No. Would you be interested? Sure, can I, I have cards in the back. I'd be glad to give them to you. Okay. okay. Let me let, because me while's up next, let me get my stuff. Thank you so much. It's great to be here today. Thank you.